In today's video, we will be looking at the MSI B450 Tomahawk Max motherboard. We'll be taking an unboxing and we'll have a board overview. So I only paid £42 for this motherboard off eBay, which is a really good bargain. Obviously it's a used board. Now some people might say the B450 platform is redundant now because it only supports PCI Express Gen 3. But I still don't think so. I think if you pair this up with kind of like a mid-range CPU, maybe like the Ryzen 5500, or even if you want to drop down to the Ryzen 3600 or even the 2600, it's still a great pairing and you're going to have a fantastic gaming PC. So anyway, let's uh, move on with the unboxing. So, obviously this is a ATX motherboard. Now, obviously the Tomahawk did come out originally, but this is like the max version. So, you know, this is like a, a revised version. So we'll move the board over to the side. Uh, obviously our beer coaster here, but again, no one uses driver CDs nowadays. A nice user manual, which is pretty thick as well. And is that all English? I think it's actually all English, which I know it's not. Some of it's not English, but yeah, that's a really thick uh, manual there. And I like that. Thank you for choosing MSI, obviously. And we also have, oh, that's quite nice. We also have one of those block things, which is like a um, front panel block. So you plug in the front panel block and then you can plug it to your uh, headers here, which, which is nice to have. We have a True Gaming MSI badge, um, also a little bit of a leaflet as well, and obviously our IO shield. So first of all, I think it looks quite a nice board. I don't know about you guys, but you know that sort of like silver black sort of aesthetic going on. I think that's quite nice. Yeah, and nice model board overall. So looks wise, happy with that. Let's start from the top left and we'll work round to the right, all the way down to the bottom, across, and then obviously the IO panel at the back. So let's go. So first of all, we have our eight pin CPU connection in the top left hand corner as standard. So some very good VRM cool in here. Obviously MSI kind of want this to be more of like a premium motherboard. So when it was released anyway, this was pretty premium. So obviously there's good heat sinks there. So it's obviously uh, just gonna help if you've got you know, like a, a beefy CPU. So technically up to a Ryzen 5950X could actually fit in here and could actually run. Although I kind of feel if you're getting up to that level, obviously you want to be looking at B4, B550 at least, or even X570. So obviously our AM4 socket in the middle there is standard. We have only one CPU fan connection in the sort of top corner or like where you usually see the uh, connector. Let's look, let's actually look to see how many fan connectors we have first of all, before we go further. So we've got, so in total we have six potential fan connectors, although two of them are kind of more for the CPU. So you've got your CPU fan, your optional pump, and then four uh, additional connectors. So on an ATX board, that's fantastic. So obviously our DDR4 modules here, so, um, we have four slots here. So I think it takes up to 128 gigabytes, but again, I'll put it below if not. Obviously, overclockable RAM is good for, for uh, rising, obviously, and having high speed RAM is obviously good. So 3600 probably is ideal here, but you can go higher if you wanted to, but I kind of feel with DDR4, 3600 RAM is kind of where you want it to be. So yeah, it's all good there. We have our 24 pin connector here. There's another, there's a, there's our first system fan, which is on the left here. So that's quite nicely placed. We have a total of six SATA ports. So coming down to the bottom here, we have the USB free front panel connector. No USB-C front panel connector, but again, this is kind of like a little bit more of an old motherboard. So uh, you kind of have to excuse a little bit. And obviously if you're wanting the whole USB-C front panel and everything like that, you are probably going to have to go up to B550, I think. There's maybe some B450 motherboards that actually do have the uh, USB front panel connector, but not many, unfortunately. And we have two USB 2 connectors for front panel connectors, sorry. Weirdly, we have our front panel connectors actually here in the middle, which usually they're at the sort of side or like, you know, the far sort of left hand side, or the far right hand side of the motherboard. They're actually just in the middle there. Um, 
Another port, which I'm not sure what it is, but and again, you're not really going to use that port probably. Um, then we have our system fan here. There's also a COM port, but again, you're not going to use that. And then, uh, sorry, that this is your third system fan here. And then you have normal RGB, four pin, 12 volt version. Now, unfortunately, oh, sorry, this doesn't have the three pin, five volt ARGB, addressable RGB header. So it is a downside with this board. It is a bit, like I say, a little bit more of an older platform and an older board. So you will have to accept that, unfortunately. Um, if you are using a lot of ARGB fans or even CPU fans or anything else, then you won't have that ability with this board, unfortunately. So, so it's, it's, it's a minor downside, but again, for the price of only £42, I'm happy to have one or two little features that I don't really need because you can actually get normal RGB fans anyway, so I'm happy with that. And then our front panel audio just at the bottom there. Now, again, one of the drawbacks I think to this board or maybe even to the B450 sort of platform, um, it only supports, well, first of all, you only got one M.2 slot, but the M.2 obviously only supports Gen 3, PCI Express Gen 3, so you won't be able to fit a Gen 4 uh, NVMe drive in here. Well, you will be able to fit it, but it will only run at Gen 3 speeds, obviously. Um, we also have a Gen 3 Time 16 PCI Express slot for your graphics card. Now, unfortunately, again, like I said, B450 doesn't support the Gen 4, so if you do have a very modern graphics card, you might want to go up to the B550 just so you can get that full support for PCI Express. Gen 4 support or PCI Express Times 16 Gen 4 support. P PCIe Times 1 slot, so we have two of them, sorry. Then we have a Times 16 slot, I think that's Times by 1, and then a, an additional Times 1 slot. So obviously plenty of expansion. Probably you're going to fit Wi-Fi wi wi cards here, maybe the additional USB cards and stuff like that here. So it's there if you, if you need the additional expansion because this doesn't actually have any Wi-Fi uh, built in unfortunately and just forgot to say there's a, an additional system fan header up here as well so you will be able to put your rear fan your rear rear case fan to into that port so moving to the rear io of the uh, msi b450 tomahawk max motherboard obviously the big good good feature here is obviously the uh BIOS flash button, so you can actually flash the BIOS. I think you use the first port here, which which is the which is the first one directly by the button to actually put your USB pen in. So obviously, when you've got the mobile board, you just have the mobile board with a power supply connected, and then you power it on. You press the button, and as long as your USB has the BIOS flash file on there it should flash the uh, new bios which then means you can put ryzen 5000 series cpus in here now i don't know the exact bios in this mobile board and it wasn't said on the ebay listing but probably assume i'm a, i'm basically i'm assuming this is ryzen 3000 series up to currently so probably if i do go up to the ryzen 5500 or put potentially a, a ryzen 5000 series CPU in here that I, I will flash the BIOS, but obviously it, it's there for you if you need it basically. So we have two USB 2 ports here, as well as a PS2 old style port as well for old style keyboards, which is there for legacy, but again, I'd like to see this with just USB ports, but it is what it is. And only a total of six USB ports as well, is a little bit disappointing, but never mind. We have a DVI port for uh, video out, so if you're using an APU like the uh, 5600G or something like that, and obviously a HDMI port as well. So I'll, I'll put all the like um, specs up on on here on the uh, screen as well for you. And then we have a USB three, I think that's Gen two ports. I think we've got three of them, and then a USB C 3.2 Gen C. Um, sorry. I think it's USB 3.2 Gen 2 and then Type C. Again, I'll put it on the I'll put it on the screen for exactly what it is. And then we have a one gigabyte LAN port, and obviously our audio port, which is actually there's six of them, so that's actually quite nice. A little bit of a sparse rear I/O, I think. Um, it's a little bit of a disappointment, and also there's no integrated I/O shield. You will 
you will have to use your IO shield, which should come in the box, uh, which is additional, um, which again isn't isn't a deal breaker, but again it's just one of those niceties that you like to see on boards. But yeah, if you want to actually get a B450 board, I do think this is a really nice board. It is ATX, so it will fit in ATX cases. Um, you won't need any of those sort of like you won't be a micro ATX, so you have to fit it in an ATX case or anything like that, so it doesn't look ugly. So that's also nice. It is very budget, and obviously now with B450 kind of being a little bit sort of a redundant you know, redundant platform almost because of B550. These boards are going pretty cheap now. And if you want to build a very cheap PC, which pretty much is my aim anyway, maybe it's your aim as well, that this is this is a good motherboard overall for this. And MSI are a very solid manufacturer and the Tomahawk range has always been known to be very reliable and, you know, very good with power delivery and, you know, pretty much fine for pretty much even like beefier CPUs than probably it should be for, for its range. So I'd say anything like Ryzen 7 and then downwards is fine. I think once you get to Ryzen 9, I'd probably, uh, probably would go up to B550 by then. But I'd say anything like Ryzen 7, 3700X, the 5700X, the uh, even the 5800X I'd probably go to. So yeah, once, once, obviously once you get to 5900 and 5950X, it's probably going to be maybe slightly too much, but it probably could do it. But yeah, I probably waffled on a little bit too much, guys. So hope you like this little mobile board overview and obviously unboxing. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.